Hi and welcome to Quality Chess vlog number 13 and today we have a guest all the way from America and uh, am I right in guessing that it's Texas? Yes, from Texas. All the way from Texas. That's a, that means you just rolled out of bed just to join us here. We are, we're sitting here in the nice afternoon sun. Well, it's, it's nice much. afternoon anyway, Scotland. So. Actually, it's really, really raining and stormy here, so let's hope things will go smoother later in the yeah, day. Yeah, here it's actually really sunny and nice, but it's Scotland, so no one's going to believe me. I understand. Yes. So, okay. So, uh, the reason why we asked you to join us is uh, because you won some tournament a few weeks ago. Correct. So, uh, 2017 American champion, US champion. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Jacob. It's It's been a, a great uh, great tournament for me, probably the best one of my uh, career. So, you know, it's it's a great pleasure to be able to to share it with everyone. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, uh, I had uh, sort of coerced you a little bit and uh, asked you to, to show a game for us. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we got to that, I just want to want to check. Am I right in thinking there was only one draw? One... Uh, now you're, <laughs> you make me <laughs> rethink my... How many my, games did you lose? I lost two games. No, you, I, I made two draws. I made, I made two draws. Draw, I made two draws against uh, Jennifer Yu and Nazi Paikidze. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you made eight out of eleven. Yes. That's still a lot of points. Yeah, and I lost two games too. So the, yeah. it was painful because it was at the beginning. So you know, you you think that if you're losing at the beginning, okay, maybe your tournament is not uh, set to be a good one or something. Uh, but uh, for me, it turned out great in the end. So I guess uh, people are right when they're saying that uh, the last ones will be the first ones. So at least for me, it worked out this way in this tournament. Yeah, it, it seems to me with the US championship that there's always a, a high amount of uh, nervousness happening towards the end of the tournament, especially in the women's tournament. I think with uh, in the men's tournament, the, the players have used to, you know, they played the Grand Prix and the, the World Cup and the World Championship, and they're used to playing at, for very high stakes. But for the women, it's just once a year. That's true, yeah. I mean, women's chess has been kind of, um, not as popular, but I feel that we are very competitive and you will see more decisive results um, than in men's competition. So, uh, you know, in a way, uh, there's a lot of pressure. We kind of, I think we, we want to beat each other and, and finish first. And like you said, it's it's one, one time a year that uh, we have the opportunity of getting some really good prizes. Um, and it's all to to um, the San uh, Luis um, Chess Club. So, I mean, you know, it's. I think it makes sense that there is some nervousness going on. Um, but, yeah, it's it's probably it's happening in the men's too. But they are more used to not showing it, maybe. Yeah. Well, they maybe don't talk so much about it afterwards as well. Yeah. But no, in the, I think in the, often in the, the women's tournament, uh, the last few years, we saw some uh, games where there was, there was quite erratic uh, play. And I think it was just people getting very nervous. Because in the past, uh, Irina Krush and Anna Satonska, they were dominating the tournament and taking its turn winning it. And, and everyone else was basically out of the running. But then in the last few years, it's become uh, more open for, for other players. And I think uh, suddenly people are seeing there's a chance and they're nervous. That, Why would they be? That's, that is true, but also there have been, um, uh, a lot of us have recently, well, or not so recently, um, changed our federations to play for the United States. So I think that championship has uh, gotten stronger with that. But also a lot of youngsters are, are um, you know, working a lot on chess and, and um, they have been doing really well in the past year. So, it, you know, it's definitely a type of tournament that is getting stronger and stronger every year. So it's a good thing, I think. 
Yeah, no, the, the thing, the, the, my point with, with going with this is uh, in the last round, you seemed incredibly stable in your game, as we shall see in a moment. I, uh, I was somewhat confident that uh, I cannot really lose anything. I, I would, uh, uh, to me, it was very important for a really long time to finish in top three. And I knew that that's not going to be taken away from me anymore. So um, I just wanted to um, to play, you know, normal chess and just play the, the position. And um, somehow, you know, all the other emotions came after the game um, or before the game. So before the game, you know, I had some kind of talk with my fiance, Grandmaster Alshon Moradia Badi, trying to... He was trying to calm me down that it's okay, you know, you just play chess, you play, you, you take care of your pieces like until now. And um, and then so when I arrived at the game that I forgot completely about everything else and I just, you know, played it, not being scared uh, about uh, potentially losing or something. And um, I also, I was... I got the type of position that I, in general I enjoy playing more positional and and with space. So I think it was um, uh, you know the cards were in my favor. Okay, let's uh, put a few moves on the board here. So, sure. Uh, the Nimso Indian. Uh, yes. You, you hadn't played that previously in the tournament, so just no, just trying to avoid preparation or. Trying to avoid preparation and uh, also I thought I should try to get some unbalanced position um, to uh, to be able to just play chess. I didn't know what my opponent was going to play and um, I thought, you know, both of us being out of out of preparation would be, you know, a great, uh, um, a great start. So we decided to that yeah, well, Imzovic should, would be a good idea. We should maybe say here at this point, uh, you're in a shared lead. Is there, yes. Uh, is, was there a one point drop down to third place or some or half point? But there was, uh, uh, was but quite a, quite a lot of points, seven out of 10. Yes, myself and Nazi Bakiza are both seven out of 10. And um, Irina uh, Crush was uh, one point behind. So if either of us would lose the game, she would, and she would win. She would catch up with us. Okay. So Queen C two castles, Knight F three and C five, sort of a popular line. We'll just skate past this. But here we have a, a normal theoretical position. Uh, it's not not the main main line, but it's uh, sort of well known. And here came C six. How did you feel yes. when you saw this move? Um, I was surprised <laughs> uh, in a way, but uh, because I have played this line myself as white years ago, and uh, well, I'm still playing it sometimes with white. And I was sure this is not something I I have uh, paid attention to. Um, and um, somehow right before the game, I thought, let me double check again what was her preparation in general or what was she playing against uh, the Nimzovich. And I had seen she had played a time ago a game with C6, but I didn't play, pay too much attention to it because I think it was five years ago and, okay, people, people do change. So uh, I told myself, you know, uh, having worked with you, <laughs> For, for about, uh, what is it now, maybe two months? Um, at that point, it was maybe a month and a half or something. I told myself, okay, I need to remember Jacob and see what he was saying about, you know, considering the position and what is going on. So I just calmly, um, you know, captured with a B pawn. And uh, I said, there's no way that there could be some really good... Um, you know, ideas for for white in this position. I should be fine. I'll be able to play d5, have my center, and things will be great. But then after the game, I found out that, well, I was familiar with the c6 idea in Nimzovic, but not in this <coughs> position. And uh, I was told that um, um, Alexander Morozovic had some, uh, has come up with this idea. Um, and um, 
I was still okay. I was still okay about about having to play it, but you know, I only found out later, so I couldn't. Yeah, the think. way the way the game developed, and as I saw it, was uh, black saves a tempo, a winter mm -hmm. tempo, because white is moving the pawn and gets taken immediately, and strengthens the center. It's, yes. Uh, it doesn't seem like. Uh, you know, White has to prove very, very quickly that there's some big idea. Otherwise, it doesn't really work for me. Um, but maybe A3 here could have been interesting. I don't know. But let, let's move on a bit because uh, she didn't have any big follow-up idea. Uh. Yes, I, f I found this G3 and Bishop D2, specifically Bishop D2, not to be really the best move here. I feel that, you know, somehow even g3, white is allowing um, really the eventual push of d4, getting the space, and I feel that maybe e3 should have been played instead, even if you don't, um, you know, you don't get so much anymore as white, but at least you try to uh, to keep the position, you know, not allow the opponent to get so much space. Um, this was This was my view. Um, in the position, because I understand somewhat why c6 would be a good a good idea for her, uh, trying not you know to make me wait a little bit longer with my knight in a6, but uh, really that center she probably really uh, underestimated the strength of of black center. Yeah, the the way you know the way I always look at uh, at the opening is uh, who's got a lead in development. And generally, if you have a lead in development, you you should consider doing something, mm -hmm. sort of quickly. And uh, and this is what you do. You um, come here. There was other good moves. There are other good moves everywhere. But here again, <laughs> you know, this is like uh, when I was a very little child, um, a little fat child, anyway. <laughs> um, a, a young young child is the right uh, right words. Um, you know, they were telling me, oh, look, the white knight here has made three moves and the black knight has only made one move. So black has one time. And it's not a stupid way to look at the position at all, I think. Um, white's play is very slow and castling still seems far away. Uh, she was allowed to, but then uh, you get all of this stuff here. There were, there were other yeah. options. Um, Some options earlier, if you if you'd like to uh, maybe. Nah, I, I think I no? think you know the the idea that uh, that there are many ways to play for an advantage here. I think yeah. it's, it's sort of obvious. Uh, uh, and the computers will say, oh, this was slightly less accurate than something else. But when you're sitting here being white and it's under constant pressure, uh, you have to find something and whether or not your 0.7 worse or 0.6 worse it's really not going to change your emotional experience much it's just one of pain <laughs> that's um, true so she tried to uh, come with a counter attack with the queen yes and uh, i almost uh, freaked out here for a little bit because i had seen the move and uh, i knew my reaction was going to be c5 uh, but somehow I stopped and I double checked everything because um, I I thought I, I miscalculate I miscalculated something after c5 knight takes e5 was an option and I thought well queen takes uh, e5 queen takes a6 and now uh, I was planning to go yes rook takes rook takes b2 and uh, a little bit so. I know that I'm better in this position, but I thought maybe I missed something because she she got the opportunity of trading some pieces and this should be good for her. But then I realized, you know, when I took a closer look to the position after, you know, I realized, well, c5 is my only move in the position, I should make this work, that uh, the e2 pawn is going to be lost and then uh, I have the d4 pawn, pass protected, and even if, you know, Technically, with a further away past pawn of her, the A pawn, after she will take in A7, uh, might seem dangerous or something. Um, well, your pawn will be on the second rank very quickly. Yes. <laughs> so I, I, re I got relaxed here. It was probably a moment. Yeah, I, I just saw a funny line, which was if she tries to somehow, you know, eliminate your uh, uh, pawn, then uh, 
there's mm -hmm. big problems. Yes, this looks like a very nice line. I, I you know, I think it looks looks correct. Yes. So C five, you play B three. Yes, um, and here I was trying to figure <coughs> out what might be um, a good continuation for me, and. Um, I focused on the queen, uh, I wanted to focus on white's queen in a5, being outside of play. Um, so um, I decided to that now is the right moment to play e4, get a little bit more space, but then trying to, to, uh, to play against that queen. So now with the knight in d2, the queen has some trouble retreating back and um, and I didn't really find a, a good plan for White to to um, um, get out of this difficult situation. I mean, I felt that f3 or e3 would be something she might need to play, but it's very hard to play them in in good circumstances because you know it it's either giving me more space or losing some material. So. Um, so here rook a d1 and I, I I quite like rook b6 which is just making sure everything is connected and, and protected and the rook can come along in the sixth rank somewhere. Yes, well. you know at the time that I played it I didn't think so much about, I mean I knew that it could come but I was only looking at the possibility of rook a6. Um, so I wanted to protect my pawn in c5, move my knight and try to trap her queen. This was basically my idea with the move. But of course, I like the pl the placement in b6 because it's flexible. You know, rooks rooks have to have that kind of um, way to get active. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to go into it, but I think here in this position, she had to play e3 and somehow uh, sit and hold the position. But it's it's very unpleasant. Um, no, no matter what she does, this move is this must be wrong. Yes, it's another piece placed uh, on, on not such a great position. She was getting ready to play e3 and probably hoping that I would push d3, which would seem natural to get my passed pawn protected. But, you know, if I would do that, then the knight would come to c3 and then, uh, yeah, yeah so if I do it this so way. She sort of want to do this, which, which here it makes more sense. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if it works. Um, they, they, that seems to be, be knight, knight b4 or maybe queen c6 followed by knight b4. It could be very dangerous. Um, but I, I don't know why you would play play d3. Yes, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't play d3. I, I was saying that probably this was in her mind uh -huh. uh, to try to get the... Uh, I think I can play... Uh, there isn't a specific threat here, so maybe... Maybe even bishop. No, you should be careful of knight takes e4, I think. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I thought this is how she had to play, and then rook e1, and then try to see if she can get counterplay against uh, e4. Um, and, and I think you have many ways for an advantage. So let's, let's not go too deep into that. Mm -hmm. Let's just say knight b1 was, was rather ugly. You play queen e7, which is defending a7 and e4 at the same time. Mm -hmm. And c5. I was getting ready and for knight and c5 <laughs> because you're ready for yeah. knight b4. Yeah. Absolutely. So e3 she played in this position, mm -hmm. and maybe she somehow was so was like a little nervous about d3. So she got so fixated on she thought she would absolutely play it, but you never did. No, no, I. I suddenly got very excited when she played e3 because, um, you know, you and I have have discussed sometimes uh, the looking around and uh, trying to understand what is going on in the position. So I was trying to figure out some changes that happened for her, and I realized that capturing in d4 for white is actually going to help me surprisingly open up some attack at the king on the king side which uh, it was definitely not in my 
uh, in my plan. My only plan was to focus on the queen in uh, in a five. Yeah, and, and suddenly uh, all your targets over there are, are becoming actually just misplaced pieces. Yes, yeah. So I was I was very excited. I calculated this this idea, and I thought, okay, let's go for it. So I played bishop g4 first um, to rook d2. rook d2, and this bishop g4, I, I really like it also because uh, I exit with a bishop from the fifth rank, mm -hmm. which if at some point I decide after e takes d4 to capture with a c pawn in d4, my bishop would not be hanging. So I should definitely be careful about that. Yeah, um, and uh, here rook d2 seems seems natural, but this is you know the moment that triggered. So do you my... know my three questions? Uh, which which ones? <laughs> uh, my three, uh, you know, not not like what's your phone number, what's your birthday, no, <laughs> not, not these ones. <laughs> not those. Um, okay. No, uh, where are the weaknesses? Uh, which is yes. the worst place piece? Is the one I'm thinking about here. Yes. We have the knight on a6. Mm -hmm. It's not doing anything. What makes a piece badly placed in my universe, do you know? Uh, if it doesn't do much and if it... If it uh, has no function, yes. Yeah. yeah. This is like people think I'm really, I must be this good trainer. I talk to people and they don't remember anything I say. <laughs> That's not true. I don't remember the specifics, but I remember when to use them. You remember what to do, which is what matters. Yeah. So here but, the night on ACs. No, it's it's like uh, I wrote an article for uh, Danish Federation's magazine based on actually your games from Tehran. Mm -hmm. Where one of the points was you have to have a, an idea or a purpose for all your pieces. And, uh, and that was what that article was about. And here uh, we have knight on a6 which which needs a, a purpose i know and and i felt bad about that knight for for a lot, a lot of the game i mean we're on move 22 now or uh, and I, I you know i placed my knight there what move five six and and it's still there i haven't improved it and uh, you know I, I think it's important to since you use the word function to to get get your pieces a really good function as you know when you can get them a really great function i think it's it's good to do it so um i felt bad about that night throughout the game but r now it was the right moment to to bring it into well your whole, a whole setup for attacking the queen is now possible for if she goes h3 then it actually works here yeah. here here and here Seven, and, queen and now, d, queen mm -hmm. d8 not queen d6 because then there's some uh, some tricks. Capture in here, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but here, and now the bishop c6. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to do, and if bishop e4, then just rook b6, queen h7, yeah. and rook e4, and it's a win. So already here, she's very limited choice. Uh, yeah. Queen queen a3 and queen c1 doesn't look like a winner either. No, and now with my knight in b4, I can consider at some point placing my knight in d3, and that queen will remain trapped. Will so, not get well, uh, queen, queen is, is, is very eminently trapped. So she took on d4, which you must mm -hmm. have, have expected as well. Yes, yes. I mean, when I, I spent some time playing knight b4, I wanted to make sure I'm calculating this right, and I'm not going to you know, mess up, because I knew black's clearly better in this position. So... Okay, I, I didn't want to mess up anything. I sometimes messed up better positions, so I thought I should be careful. And uh, yeah, she captured... If we in... look at all the white pieces here, we can see why black is better. <laughs> all, all the black pieces are active. They are, you know, they are, have hopes for, for a future. And the white pieces, they, they don't even play together. It's, a, yeah. it's not a surprise that something could happen. Especially when she opens up the position with ED4. And so you play E3. E3. I was very happy about this move. She captured Must take. really fast, I think. Well, I don't she... think there was any choice, really. Yeah. And takes. And, and um, King H1. King H1. And this and... was uh, sort of the moment. We always have this moment where we're like, ooh, 
we stop for a moment and people can can pause the screen and so on and and if they want to do that they probably already have done it so now uh, now think about how are you thinking about this position here uh well i had calculated it earlier so i just was double checking things but uh my my thought process was okay all of my pieces are really well placed besides one that's not really getting ready into the attack so yes the rook in b6 i need to find a way to get it somehow on on the king's side and uh, you know that now that white's king's position has been weakened uh and the queen is in a uh, a5 outside of play the knight is in b1 not doing very much i need to find a way this this there has to be something here and um well since i mentioned you know i looked at my pieces as you taught me <laughs> reminded myself so the rook in b6 i brought it into play and of course everybody can pause for a second if they want to find it but they, yeah. if they would they already did <laughs> they did it <laughs> So yeah, so I play rook f6 here, and um, and I, a lot of people liked another move that that I played later, but I I'm very happy about this this move. I thought rook f6 was the move. You know, this was was because it's it's the sort of thing you can miss. Uh, you know, you the, the main point here is if rook takes, you just take back, and she can't defend the first rank. Yes. There's, there's there's no way like h3 you, you take on g3 rookie one. There, yes. There's really no variations, but if you're not seeing it, you can miss this. But yeah. for a for a player of your level, then on the next move you won't miss the ideas. You know. Yeah, I mean. But, uh, I was... but this move you could miss, and 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 people do miss these kind of things all the time. I'm very happy you agree with me that this was uh, this was the stronger move. So it it means that I the work does pay off, and I started thinking like you, which I'm happy about. Not on every level, but <laughs> that you also think that rook f6 is the 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 move here. Uh, that was probably one of the probably the best in in the game. And um, when I played it, I was uh, I, I really I saw the, those ideas, and uh, maybe a positional player would be a little bit reluctant to make this move because of the capture in f6 and getting the double pawns. But this is not the time to think about stuff like that when White's king is is getting mated. So, anyways, and here she went. Yeah, I was, you know, I watched later. I uh, I was in Thailand at the time of the game, so I, I only. Uh, uh, saw the result like an hour after the game finished. Um, I was doing something I rarely did on my trip, which was sleeping. Um, yeah, no, I had I, I slept for like six hours that night. It was it was like a world record. Good. Um, no, so uh, <clears throat> I saw the later I, when I came home. Uh, I saw the video of you. At this point, I just thought you know it was interesting because every, you have all these cameras and all these things and. And the commentary is, is always very lively and unfortunately I couldn't really follow it this year. Uh, but normally I have it like on my surround sound and my mm -hmm. uh, projector in my home cinema. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have like the US championship. I sit in, in my sofa with a uh, with, uh, freshly squeezed uh, orange juice and, and enjoy, enjoy the, the commentary. I, I, really, I really love everything about the tournament. Anyway, so, uh, you know, I was looking at, at your expression here and they were looking at you, you were like, ah. <laughs> well, I realized that I'm close to like potential having some mating ideas here and I didn't want to mess up anything. And a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, cameras showed up uh, around this time. I don't know exactly when, but the, around of a lot of people taking pictures and um, Normally they they don't let them, but I guess they realize that something might happen, or I don't know. It seemed it's... it seemed like suddenly a lot of people showed up uh, in the playing hall, and uh, I you know this is always sure. with computer analysis. When everyone shows up, it's like, oh my god, that's <laughs> that's that's my magic yogurt. You know, there there is something in the position. <laughs> you know? No, I mean they came a little bit a little bit later, but I mean I was like, wow, okay. Um, I need to make sure I'm not messing up this. Uh, why? Why is there? You know, why are there so many people around? And um, and yeah, so I I wanted to make sure I'm you know I don't mess up things. But um, um, 
But you only I... spend like two minutes here before uh, before choosing your move. I didn't even realize I spent that much. It seems so much to me. <laughs> but... uh, it was, I think it was two minutes, yeah. And uh, they were like, oh, is she going to go for the safer options and so on? And it was, no. Yeah, I'm not the type of person that would do that. I, I was really surprised that they would even... Uh, I guess nobody really, uh, you know, talked about my games very much during during the tournament. I was not a favorite to win uh, this year. So, um, but in, I think uh, I've always enjoyed uh, attacking and and uh, playing dynamic chess. It doesn't mean I, that I play it well, but I enjoy playing it when I have the chance. So, I think uh, everyone I would... will agree that this is a good game. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, but... so we, we, sh we shouldn't draw this out uh, too much. I'm sure everyone who have wanted to have already found the, the force mate. Uh, okay, you know, I, I, was, I, was, I, was in a, I was having a training session in Chennai. At some point, someone suggested something in a position, which I knew couldn't work because I had, mm -hmm. uh, it was an exercise and he suggested something for black. That I knew couldn't work because this variation was supposed to be a draw, you know, if you go down mm -hmm. some line. And he played, played this king move instead of taking back. And I was like, you know, we're all looking and we're just suggesting moves. And we weren't really going to. I was like, no, no, everyone, let, let's think here. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm an old man. And this is like, there's 11 young grandmasters in, 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 uh, in the room. And uh, uh, so we sit and we calculate. And after like two minutes, I'm like, does everyone have the maid? And everyone shakes. <laughs> then a few hands come after a few more minutes and then after 10 minutes I'm like okay now everyone has the mate right and someone like no <laughs> <laughs> but I think everyone has it here do you want to say what you played yes queen takes g1 there you um, go. yeah they actually on, on some websites they, they said that this was the second best uh, uh, sacrifice or move of, of, the, of the championship yeah, Both. there was uh, Wes Wesley So's game against was it Jeffrey Shong or? I think so. I yeah, think so. It was, uh, that was an amazing game. Yeah. Um, but you know, when when uh, when you're next to you know uh, to somebody of the caliber of Wesley So, your your game is up there. I think it's. It means that it was it was a cool a cool thing, and what I like about this position and something that you know we we worked on. Of course, yes, this was Some another. Some people were suggesting this, and but you but can. there's queen d8, queen d8, and queen takes f6. I take, and then rook f2, and I capture. Of course, the you win, but. Of course, but. But this is uh, made. <laughs> when you have mate on the board, I don't think you should you should go for for piece, for winning pieces. And uh, yeah, so. So you said here, something we worked on. Um, now I forgot what that was. Okay. Be. Anyway, not, check, but, check, check. Yeah. No, but what I liked about this is that all of my pieces, the final pieces that I have on the board, um, are working together to mate. Um, even if that night they did a six for for the entire game, once it came into play and it got that function, <laughs> I'm going to re use this word forever now. Um, you know, it's it's doing a great job of stopping White's king from getting to d3, and then there was another line that she could go to e4, and then uh, the d5 square would also be controlled. So the knight would. So if now she goes king, yeah. Uh, now the the knight also controls the d5 square. So, uh, you know, I was pretty pretty happy that the remaining of my pieces kind of was type of study position, you know. But okay, it's not a study. Yeah, but, no. Uh, every. Uh... Every piece uh, controls a, a square uniquely. Yeah. Uh, so we have uh, here, 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 and here, which can o which are only oh, and of course here. Yeah. Which are all uh, controlled only by one piece. Yeah. So that that's quite nice. Yeah. And a bit green. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so. This was my game. It's a very game. nice game. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, we always uh, run the risk of, of running over here, and, and we definitely have. But uh, thank you very much for showing this game.
Thank you and, for having uh, me. Oh, you're very welcome. Should we do and some training? And for agreeing to work with me too. I mean, for training with me this during this time, it's it's uh, been a great help for me. And uh, no worries, no worries. Okay, let's uh, before this become also sentimental. Let's cut off and uh, and do some real training. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you.